so it's a pleasure for me to introduce T. Krishna Kumar, who's from Rockville Anim Analytics in the United States. And he'll speak to us about probabilistic foundation of econometrics. This is Dr. C. R. Rao's contributions. Please. I thank uh, Professor Manjunath Prasad and Mahe for inviting me to make a presentation here in this conference in honor of Professor C. R. Rao. Uh, in honor of his uh, centennial celebration. And I would like to take this opportunity to invite all of you to a Facebook page that I have created called Dr. C. R. Rao Birth Centenary Celebration. I like you to use that platform to share anything you have to say about Dr. Rao and his contribution, including any pictures, videos, or anything that is a depository of uh, all those things that many people have already shared and uh, that I am planning to use that to bring out uh, a publication on the occasion of his birth centenary. I'm going to talk today about Professor C. R. Rao's contributions to the foundations of economic science, which means econometrics. It's a quantitative analysis of economics that has mathematics and statistics applied to economics. This uh, interest of mine in Professor Rao's work actually should have started in 1961-62, but unfortunately I picked up his work only in uh, 2010 when uh, we were organizing his 90th birthday. Uh, conference at uh, C.R. Rao Institute in Hyderabad. The story is like this. In 1961, when I was uh, working at ISI Calcutta as a research scholar, Dr. Rao confronted me and said, why are you still here? We would expect you to go to USA to do a PhD in econometrics. I said, I said, I need a letter of reference from two econometricians. I got only one. I need one more. He said he would give one. I said, Dr. Rao, you are a very well-known statistician, but you are not an econometrician. Then he asked me to go to the library and see 1947 issue of Econometrica, which I saw. And then I saw an article by him, which is called A Note on a Problem of Ragnar Frisch published by Frisch himself as the editor of Econometrica on the basis of a recommendation from Harald Hoteling forwarding Dr. Rao's paper. And the paper dealt with a very simple problem posed by Professor Frisch to Neyman in 1936 European meeting of the Econometric Society meetings. And the problem posed was simply like this. Suppose there is one regression, x1 regressed on a variable psi with an equational error alpha, and there is another regression, x2 regressed on psi with a regression error beta, where psi, alpha, and beta are random variables. Under what distributional conditions of psi, alpha, and beta does x1 have a linear regression on x2? And this problem was actually solved by Dr. Rao in 1943 as a part of his MA thesis in statistics at, IS, at uh, Calcutta University. And he communicated it to Econometrica through Harold Hoteling in 1947, when he was at Cambridge, still working on his PhD with uh, Sir Ronald Fisher. And uh, the theorem he provided in that paper 
is a starting point of a series of papers he and his students and colleagues had written over the years on characterization problems. Some of you must have heard his uh, work with the Russian um, mathematicians, Linick and uh, Abraham Kagan. So there is a book, Linick, Kagan and Rao on characterization. All that work and the work done by his students, Laha, Khatri and Ramachandran, all those things and Shanbag, all of them dealt with characterization problems. And another, another of his students, Professor Prakash Rao, has also written many papers on characterization and he wrote a book on characterization issues. In fact, Professor Prakash Rao and I are picking up what I am talking about today to work a little bit more on Dr. Rao's contributions. So the problem solution was answered like this. Random variables psi, alpha, and beta have finite means assume. Assume that without loss of generality, those means are equal to zero. Assume that beta is independent of psi and alpha. And expected value of i given psi is equal to zero. Then a necessary and sufficient condition for the regression of x1 on x2 to be linear for all a and b is that the characteristic function phi t of psi and the characteristic function omega t of beta are of the form given in the slide e to the power minus c absolute value of t raised to the power d and the other one is c prime more or less similar for some positive constant c and c prime and a d that lies between 1 and 2. That theorem, looking at those numbers, doesn't mean much. But a careful analysis will show that those characteristic functions refer to a very wide class of distributions called distributions called the distributions that follow a stable law. Stable law is the one where if two random variables have a distribution, their sum also has the same distribution. And in this family of stable law distributions includes symmetric distributions with finite means such as normal and includes symmetric distributions even with infinite moments such as Cauchy and it includes asymmetric distributions with fat tails such as Levy distributions which are very common in economics. So, although this particular problem has been posed by Frisch and answered by C.R. Rao, and although C.R. Rao and his students and colleagues worked further on characterization problems, starting from this basic problem, it so happens that none of these people have actually examined how the particular question arose. What is the basis for Frisch, Frisch to raise this particular problem? Now Frisch is the founder of econometrics. There was no econometrics before. Frisch started the econometric society in 1930 and uh, started his journal for which he is the founding editor in 1933. And before econometrics developed, he laid the foundation and he said, application of statistics to economics requires building econometric models where you explain some economic variables, how they depend on each other, through a set of equations and then assuming that the economic observations are observed, there are observational errors 
and then you write there is a matrix vector equation I wrote on this slide ax plus b psi is equal to zero that is a deterministic equation in matrix notation which where a is a matrix n by n matrix and b is an n by m matrix and x is a vector n dimensional psi is a vector m dimensional so that the set of equations show there are n equations in n unknowns the x involving some other variables called exogenous variables psi those are called structural equations in economics and those actually form the econometric model then there's a normal procedure whereby you ask the question given the exogenous variable psi what are the values of the endogenous variables x and that is answered by deducing from that equation what is called a reduced form equation a mat to a matrix operation x is equal to minus a inverse b psi or equal to gamma psi that is called reduced form equation so this is the problem and from this problem one can write down a regression equation x is equal to gamma psi plus an eta which is a vector of random variables such that expected value of x given psi is equal to gamma psi so then Frisch raised the question what should be the distributions on psi and eta such that the left hand side variables in that vector x there is a linear equation okay now if you take a special case of that with only one exogenous variable psi and only two endogenous variables two x1 is equal to x psi plus alpha x2 is equal to b psi plus beta and psi alpha and beta are random variables under what distribution assumptions between psi and alpha and beta is there a linear regression of x1 and x2 so this is a highly special case of a more general problem of building linear structural econometric models the interesting point to note is that at that time there was no probabilistic basis for econometric models how does probability enter into economics because we don't do random experiments we don't do a sample surveys to get the data we get the usually what is the officially recorded data so where does probability enter so Frisch's idea was that probability enters because we make observations and observations have errors. So these re regression models are supposed to be regression models with variables observed, measured with error. What happened was in 1940s itself, even before Rao's paper appeared around 1944, the econometric society developed econometric models by omitting errors in variables and including only errors in equations. Hence, all of econometrics is developed with errors in equations and not errors in variables. And then people assume that errors in the variables, uh, errors in equations have normal distributions and then went ahead and applied maximum likelihood using a multinomial normal distribution for the errors. So the whole question of errors in the variables, what distributions those errors in variables will have, all that was assumed away or, or ignored altogether. As a result, people had no interest 
in the work that was done by Professor Rao. And there is a lot of interest in errors in variables models also. And there is a need to return to this problem. For example, if you take a slightly improved model compared to his 1947 theorem, namely x1 depends on not on one variable psi, but two exogenous variables psi1 and psi2. And similarly, x2 depends on two exogenous variables psi1 and psi2. So instead of one psi, I put one and two, psi1 and psi2. I, let me call that a two by two problem. Then, as an economist, I would like to ask, or Frisch would have asked, not only there is a regression of x1 on x2, but is there a regression of x2 on x1, which is independent of this? Can there be two independent regressions, one x1 on x2 and another x2 on x1? And a solution of the two, those two regression equations would solve x1 and x2. And that is that first structural equation I wrote, ax plus b psi is equal to zero, is that equation. So the question is, from this problem, does there exist or do there exist more than one linear regressions between x variables is a question that an econometrician is interested to know but unfortunately by not relating the problem which dr rao solved in 1947 with the basic reason why frisch raised that question all mathematicians and statisticians who worked on characterization problems have missed answering those questions. As a result, econometrics has not developed. Econometrics with errors in variables has not been developed. And the characterization people have not looked at very interesting problems that arise as a result of its applications to economics. So it is my feeling that there is an immense scope for further work in this area. In fact, for this problem, which I mentioned, when I take psi1 and psi2 as two variables, under what conditions there will be two equations, one regression x1 on x2 and another x2 on x1, that has been recently worked out at uh, my suggestion by Professor Bailas Prakash Rao. And he has come up with a result that that two independent regression relations between x1 and x2 will occur under a necessary and sufficient condition that psi alpha and beta, all three of them, are normally distributed. Okay. Again, perhaps that can be generalized by relaxing some other conditions. So that must be looked into because it will be much more useful if such linear regressions can happen with psi alpha and beta having table loss, just as in Rao's 1947 theorem. Not only that, an econometrician would ask the question, not only if a linear regression x1 and x2, between x1 and x2 exists, you would also ask the question, under what distributional conditions such a linear regression which exists is estimable. That means its parameters can be estimated with precision. Again, Professor Rao has contributed a lot on estimation of uh, linear functions of parameters in linear models. Rao's contribution is immense in that, 
and that is related to what we call in econometrics as identifiability. So Dr. Rao's contributions extend to laying foundations of linear econometric models, probabilistic foundations, and identifying those models, and also estimation because of is the Rao Blackwell theorem as well as the uh, maximum likelihood estimates and the second order efficiency of um, estimators and all those things are immensely useful in the development of econometrics. So I would say Dr. Rao laid the foundations of all branches of econometrics and his core method for calculating maximum likelihood estimates is widely used by econometric softwares. Any econometric software you take that is there. And Rao's core test is widely used by econometricians. I think I have taken a lot of time. Uh, I thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity to make the presentation. Thank you. Thanks very much to Professor Kumar for that interesting uh, description of Professor Rauer's foundational contributions to econometrics. Do we have questions or comments? Any questions or comments for the speaker? Yes. Thank you. Please. Most of the people are with uh, YouTube. Who are not participating, uh, interacting. OK, very good. Thank you. Uh, so uh, let me thank both the speakers in this session, uh, Sean Fallett and T. Krishna Kumar. Thank you very much.